I got a special sneak preview of Alluvium PvP, okay? And the embargo has just lifted, and now I'm able to tell you every last detail that I can. If I miss anything, throw a comment down below, but more importantly, I'm gonna go through everything. Some of this you will already know, but I've got at least five things that you have never heard of before, and I can't exactly show you footage of this stuff, but I can talk to you about it and tell you what you need to know, and then we can have a chat about it in the comments. I'll make Twitter posts and everything, so don't forget to follow, subscribe, all the rest of it. This is gonna be one of the best videos you've ever seen, and this is everything you need to know about Alluvium PvP before you can finally get your hands on it. Firstly, when you go to build a deck, you will be building a deck on the Alluvium website. Eventually, this will be going, coming to in the client, inside the game and everything, obviously. But to start off with, it's going to be on the website, and it's as simple as it sounds. You can choose your Alluvials from the deck. You can add them into your thing. Um, and the details for how the deck will be built are actually quite simple. Basically, you have full freedom. You cannot have any crazy duplicates. For example, a Ramfire with the exact same dominant synergies and stuff like that. You cannot have two of that. You cannot put two of them on the board at all in the game. The only other restriction in your deck is you need a minimum of five Alluvials. There might have been one other minor one where you have to have a minimum of one weapon and one suit or something like that. I cannot remember, but you have to have a minimum of five Alluvials. But what's most interesting about all this is there is no upper, is there is no lower cap, okay? So the maximum amount of cards in the deck is 30, as you can see here from, uh, from <laughs> Nick's tweet. But you can have 10 cards in your deck and go into the match with that. I don't know why you would, but you can do that. So I think that's really interesting. It's going to make for some really fun, meme satirical decks, but we'll see how we go. There will also be some sort of ranked system in the game. I don't think it is 100% decided, and everything I'm saying here is subject to change for the most part, especially some of the really finer details and the specifics, but for the general mechanics and everything, that is all ironed out so far. So there should be some sort of ranked system. At a minimum, we will get an ELO system just like this one here, where you will verse people of similar matchmaking prowess to yourself. As you can see here, since Dungeon Lord had such a higher, higher rating than Kieran, um, Dungeon Lord lost a lot more points when he lost the battle. So I think that is really, really cool. You, there are also three game modes you will be able to choose from. Ascendant, Casual, and a special invite code. So basically you better do like host and click a button that says like host a match. Then you'll be able to take this invite, it'll give you an invite code. You give that to another player and you'll be able to directly challenge someone else. I don't know if friends lists and things will make it into this beta. It doesn't seem like they will, but we won't need them. You will be able to directly challenge others. And ascendant mode is the ranked mode of the game. So the next thing is your opponent's deck will be revealed fit to you at the start of the match. Now we all already knew that, but you will be able to view that deck at any point during the battle as well. You won't have to like commit it to memory. That would be kind of ridiculous. So don't worry, there are other ways to deal with that, okay? So the next thing we want to talk about is the legendary augment round. We'll talk about augments a little bit and I'll have another video coming out, so don't forget to check that out. But for augments, you will have about 15 to 20 seconds at the start of the game to decide which augment you want to choose. So basically for these augment rounds, it's kind of hard to explain, but you have four augments pop up on the field and they can do a lot of really interesting things. Like you could get an augment where if you give that to an alluvial, it will gain the magma trait. Or if you give that to an alluvial, it will gain tsunami. And you also have things like casting down meteors and tidal waves and then other things that like buff the entire team and either give them lots of healing shields, all that sort of stuff. The augments can be very, very powerful. But these legendary augments, you will only have four tokens. And there are four augments. You can split it up however you would like. So some common strategies I see playing out here are things like three augments on something you really want or you really want to deny from your opponent. And then one token on something that you think you're going to be able to get. But then obviously that opens up your opponent as well. The other option is one on everything. And if your opponent goes hard on two, then you will get the remaining two or two tokens on two things to try and make sure you're guaranteeing both of them to a certain extent. So there's lots of different strategies, but basically if you both put the same amount of tokens to something, neither of you gets that legendary augment. Very, very simple. 
The next thing is Arlen. Okay, okay. Not Arlen, but the ranger that's going to be on your side of the board. Arlen's weapons and suits are invaluable. She is free to move and change her strategy at any point during the match. Why is this important? Is because the alluvials, you cannot do that. If you move an alluvial on the board, I, I don't think they have a set number yet, but it will cost a certain percentage, say 10 to 20% of the cost of that alluvial. So for example, if it was 10%, if you moved your 100 mastery point ram fire from one spot to another spot, or you can do it as many times as you want during the turn, but you'll only, you'll lose that cost at the end of the round, then your 100 mastery it would cost you 10 mastery points to do that movement. Okay, so you gotta be very careful. And then if you're taking it off the board, you might only get 70 to 90% of the mastery back. We, again, none of these numbers are finite, but you won't get the entire cost back. But with Arlen, you don't really have that problem. You can buy and sell weapons as you choose, as long as they're in your deck, and it won't you won't lose anything in terms of mastery. So it's very important that you play your ranger carefully and you have you really incorporate them into your strategy. That's all I'm going to say there. So the other thing is how long each turn actually takes. So each turn currently, you can see 60 seconds on here, but that's because it scales into the late game. It's my understanding that it starts at about 40, 45 seconds, and I'm not sure quite how hard it scales, but, to, but every round you probably add five or 10 seconds to that timer, and your round five or six might be 60 to 80 seconds or even longer than that. But the timer scales into the last late game, but 45 seconds, it seems like a lot, but from what I saw, <laughs> it can feel pretty rushed uh, when you're trying to understand what your opponent's going to do and what decision you want to make. It feels tight at the time, but the pressure being added in there is going to be very important for that competitive side of the gameplay. I don't like it when there's no competition involved. So the one of the last things we need to talk about is how the damage dealing works. Now in this league here, you can see that you and your opponent both have 800 HP. We've seen in some of the other leagues that it's 1000. I'm not sure what they ended up at, but basically how are you going to deal damage to your opponent? And it's actually a very simple calculation. Everything that you have left on the board on your side or on the board at all, if you win that round, it's dealt to your opponent. For example, a ram fire is 100 mastery points. If it's left alive, no matter how much health it has, it deals 100 damage to your opponent's drone. However, where this starts to get really interesting is actually with augments. If you have a 40 cost augment on that ram fire, that will also count and it will deal 40 damage to the opposing Mozart. And from what I saw, sometimes towards round four or so, if you're doing really well, you're really snowballing, you can have four or five really big alluvials and lots of augments, surviving and deal upwards of like five, 600 damage all in one round. So if you're snowballing well, you will defeat them very quickly. But if the rounds are really close, the game can get drawn out quite a bit, which is really, really suspenseful and really exciting. And I absolutely loved seeing those sorts of events happening. I didn't get to see too many PVP matches, but I saw enough to kind of get a gist of what was happening and how the game might play out in general sense. The other thing is that augments have completely changed. And you'll have to check that out in my next video, but basically every single augment you play outside of the legendary augments will have one of two effects you can choose, and that's just how it is. There's no other secondary effects like before, but basically if you play an augment, it might um, heal your alluvial for 100 health or give it 100 max health. The, the two effects are usually really similar, and they will be written on the augment card but it actually makes it really easy, um, a lot easier to process. Again, with that 45 second timer, you don't want too many things to do in a round. And this certainly remedies a lot of those concerns that might've come up if it had the old augment system. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about PVP. Let me know if I was really helpful in giving you insights into how the game is going to work. It's even more than that. And I will get around to videos on that as well. But I hope you guys learned something. Hope you guys are as excited as I am we are so much closer than you might think. I've seen them play the game, no issues. We had one weird bug at the end where it would pre-calculate it. But besides that, there are no issues and it's looking really fantastic. The strategy looks a little bit, a little bit lackluster so far. Like it was actually pretty solid once I watched a few games happening, but without being in the driver's seat, I can't really imagine how much strategy and how many mind games there actually is. Watching on the sidelines is a lot harder to see that side of things. So until I get my hands on it, 
I'm going to be a little bit wary on that side of things, but visually it looks great. It's a lot of fun to see what your opponent does, and there's a lot that's happening here. Have a good one.